And joining us for more on all of this, let's bring in ABC News Medical Contributor and Chief Innovation Officer at Boston Children's Hospital, Dr. John Brownstein. Dr. Brownstein, good morning to you. You know, you work at a children's hospital, so how concerned are you about this CDC investigation now into these heart conditions and younger vaccine recipients? Yeah, thanks, Diane. I, I mean, I'm not overly concerned. This is always about the system working. You know, we're looking into these potential cases out of an abundance of caution. There's really no clear link to the vaccine so far. Obviously, more investigation needs to be done. I mean, there is an interesting cluster among adolescents and young adults, mostly males, following that second dose. But most of the cases are mild and appear to resolve themselves. So now it's all just about following up those cases. We have to remember that this myocarditis happens in younger people in a typical year, even without vaccination. So it's not like we wouldn't expect this. And it's especially concerning, especially post-COVID infection. So it really tells us the vaccine are still so critical. So part of the investigation is to get doctors to be on the lookout for this. Um, we had seen a potential cluster among military, uh, a small number of cases, but even with that data, we continue with the vaccine. So main takeaway is the investigation is necessary, but there's no real clear link. And we need to keep going with this vaccine in the 12 and, and older. The CDC does keep recommending this vaccine. And we have to be concerned that COVID infection is way worse than potentially any link to an adverse event at this point. What's your advice to parents who feel a little bit hesitant and want to wait a little bit longer before they have their kids vaccinated? You know, I get that. Every parent has to make their own decision and has to really bring in all the information that they have. But so far, this data should not change anyone's decision. You know, we have to remember that COVID has, in fact, infected millions of young children. 16,000 have gone to the hospital. We've had about 300 that have died. This is all more than what we see from a regular flu season. So the benefits keep outweighing the risks. Right? Any potential side effect is really nowhere near what the risk is of an infection with COVID. But more importantly, we have to remember these vaccines have been safe. They've been shown to be incredibly effective. And they're the key to bringing us back to our normal life, right? These are the, uh, these are the vaccines that will prevent outbreaks in schools, get our kids back into learning environments, get our kids back to camps, and will allow us to prevent community transmission. And especially when we have vulnerable people out there, the vaccines are so critical to us getting back to, to that life that we once had. And New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio said this morning there will be no remote option this fall for New York City public school students. How significant is that? And what do you think about that decision? I think it's huge, right? I mean, we had over half the city's students in remote learning, and we know this has been challenging. That's a real setback for our kids. These remote environments are tough, and being able to manage two curriculum, both in person and remote, means that sort of everyone loses. And at this point, we've accumulated enough data to know that we can have in-person learning and we can do it safely. I think it's really important to know that obviously we'll have a lot of our 12 to 15 year olds fully vaccinated. We may even have under 12 vaccinated by the time that the school year arrives. So we expect to have a really safe in-person learning environment. I expect other cities and states to follow suit. But, you know, I know parents are going to be concerned. And we have to remember, we'll constantly be looking at the data. If we have a surge, if by chance we see an emergence of a variant, they will roll things back. So it's not just about, you know, we've made a decision, but we'll make sure that the kids will have a safe and effective learning environment for the fall. And Memorial Day weekend is coming up. For so long, we've been warned that holidays could be potential super spreader events for COVID-19. If you're vaccinated, do you need to be worried going into the weekend? You know, I think overall not. And, you know, Dan, you and I have had so many conversations pre-holiday, the same conversation over and over again, the concern about mobility, about rapid reopening, about variants. But I think something is really different right now. We have over 60% of American adults with that first shot. We're getting that 70% benchmark in nine states already. We have so many states that are about to close in on that. And if you look at the map of transmission, it's just totally different than what we were a year ago. And so I really do think it's a safe opportunity for those that are fully vaccinated to, to get out. At the same time, we do have pockets of transmission in this country. We do have those that are unvaccinated. And so we can't fully let our guard down. So, But with that, I really think we're having a completely different conversation than what we've had around uh, you know previous holidays. And that's wonderful to know. And, and really quickly, I want to ask about something you said, because you talked about nine states hitting that 70 percent benchmark. What does that benchmark mean exactly? 70 percent of adults vaccinated. Why is that so important? 
So, so the Biden administration has set this benchmark for July 4th to get you know 70% of American adults with that first shot. That is an important number because we think with 70% plus underlying uh, infection in the population, that really can get a, re a robust number of people that are immune to this virus to the point where we're driving transmission down. I mean, we're about just on, about to hit under 20,000 cases a day. You know, we were way greater than that, of course, months ago. I think with that number of, of vaccines out there, we'll start to really get to very small numbers of cases, which means that, you know, reopening and, and getting back to normal is within reach. All right, Dr. John Brownstein, always great to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.